Hello, Facebook land. Jen Plotnikoff coming to you live this beautiful Saturday morning. Well, morning for most of you if you are on the West Coast of North America. Um, afternoon for me. I'm also on the West Coast, but I'm further south than probably some of you folks. Hey, Jen, how are you doing? Um, thanks for joining. And if you're just joining in, I'm just getting started. This is part three of a three-part series, Living Your Boundaries. Uh, parts one and two were yesterday and the day before, and if you're looking for them, um, you can find them in the event description on my business page. So if you go to Move From Within, which is my biz page, um, just look at the event, uh, Living Your Boundaries, and you'll find uh, parts one and two. And when I go back to this video a little bit later, when I edit it, I will edit the description to actually have the links in it. So if you're watching the replay sometime in the future, you should actually see um, the um, links within the event description for the whole package deal. This is something that I've tried to do recently, so you might not see this for my old events. So if you're looking for an older event, an older workshop, you can always find the videos in the old descriptions. Again, they're available on Moved From Within. So before I get started today, um, what I wanted to talk about, of course, is um, in the last couple days we talked about <clears throat> like what really boundaries are and what why why some of the reasons why we have this tendency to kind of trample on our own boundaries or allow others to trample upon our boundaries and a lot about really deeply is ourselves to be okay with ourselves and very simple. It is a sense boundaries are very very much tied to our sense of security and inner security. So we all have insecurities. It's totally a normal part of this human experience. But one of the things that we do as we heal and understand our insecurities better and really start to um, bring this into alignment and live in this healing aspect, that is really where we start off from in, in terms of really repairing you know, the holes in our boundaries. So I, I kind of talked about that often um, in the last couple of days. So I'm not going to kind of like go into this very deeply because I talked about it quite a bit yesterday and the day before. Definitely go back into those videos if you want a little bit more diving deep into this aspect. But I talked a lot about this analogy of most of us think of our boundaries as kind of more of a wall um, or, a, you know, an army. <laughs> um, and and because of that, often what we're doing is we're barricading ourselves to protect ourselves. It seemingly seems like an effective way to do it. Some of us will have a boundary. Some of us will actually come deep, 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 deep within ourselves, so deep within ourselves that we have a hard time sometimes finding ourselves back again. Um, but it's, an, it's basically an attempt to protect ourselves. So boundaries are all about our sense of protection. So what we're talking about today is so how can we actually start to patch and repair the inner sense of protection? Because what happens is as we start to heal this sense of inner security and, and foundation within, we no longer need the egos and the, the um, what are they? basically the armies that we build um, to protect ourselves because really what those are doing is one it requires a great amount of energy to maintain those kinds of boundaries which I actually call kind of false boundaries because really they're just walls of protection however they serve a purpose of course however they are very energy they're not energy efficient and they actually block us from receiving as well. They block, block us from flow. And so when we do tend to feel stuck in our lives, it's a little bit of a catch-22 because we know we need to let stuff in. But it becomes a little bit 
um, difficult because we don't we actually haven't really properly built the capacity to filter things in in a way that's aligned to us we're used to either all or nothing either we let it all in and it can be very overwhelming and kind of inappropriate really because if you think about all that stuff that you're actually trying to protect yourself it against well as you let in the good stuff you have to let in the stuff that you don't want either either with this kind of you know wall system so that's why it's really not effective because apart from you know blocking us in our lives it's actually cutting us off from source and that's something I talked about yesterday and the day before too um, and I want to talk about this a little bit deeper today so I touched on these things we're gonna go a little bit deeper into how when we connect to the sense of repairing and healing the inner stuff is actually helping us reconnect source, so not just the greater source within us, but also the universe, source, energy, God, whatever you wanna call it, um, this experience of greater than us, the greater energy, the greater field, it helps us be aligned with the flow of that. So that is all we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'm going to give you some home play. Again, the home play are tools for you to actually not just receive this information. And often when we receive this, receive this kind of information where I'm talking to you, um, what I really invite you to do is actually kind of like let it absorb on a deeper level into the cellular level. Because often some of the things that we don't really understand in an intellectual way, or we we think we understand in an intellectual way, these messages are actually for the cells and for the body to receive. So I really invite you to really sit with this. If you're not already comfortable, sit in a comfortable, quiet space. If you don't have that, you can even come back to the replay of this video. Get into a quiet space and really just kind of absorb chunk by chunk the transmission that's coming through. This really is um, I, I do a lot of work with channeling with the Akashic field, and so this information is really coming from a higher realm for humanity to help all of us and to help support all of us. So sometimes what happens is through these different vibratory fields, particularly sometimes the lower and the higher and all the stuff in between, we need to kind of absorb it and listen to it on a different level. So I just invite you to kind of feel it in, feel it in through your belly, feel it in through your legs, your feet, your chest, your heart, as well as your mind. Because the mind takes a little bit longer to process things. So when we connect into the body and we allow, we just trust that our body can absorb this stuff take it in and, uh, and, and assimilate it, we actually are tapping into a greater capacity of knowing, absorbing, and actually organizing and receiving the information because we're receiving it from a cellular level and from the level of our cellular energy and intelligence. So just an invitation. If things are a little bit like, whoa, that's kind of cerebral, just breathe and let it kind of come into your skin come into the cells. Before I go into this further, I've already kind of dove in much deeper than I wanted to before sharing this out. I'm gonna share this video out very quickly with my tribe. If you would like to be part of the tribe, it is free to join us. Um, I am about curating a conversation and providing a deep well of support that is a soft and safe place to talk about a lot of things that for most of us are quite sticky. So I teach to healing fear, anger, um, depression, anxiety, trauma, um, but from a resourced place, from a resourced perspective, from a, a perspective in place of hope and transmutation and really shape-shifting, like I think this is in my like little descriptor on my Facebook profile, is shape-shifting our trauma into light. And really it is because our our patterns of experience that have been very sticky and difficult are often some of the greatest gifts and gems that we have to give here on this earth, in this planet. I know for myself, a lot of my um, stems from my own anxiety, a lot of the roots of my own depression and anxiety and chronic pain and health, health issues um, 
in the transmutation and understanding of where, why, not necessarily why this is, but in, in sitting with it in these different embodied ways, I've been able to really shape shift my own chronic illnesses. And really this transmission that you're hearing today, the wisdom that you receive, the healing that you receive, is really a result of my own shadows being brought to light and surface to help you understand that you aren't alone in this. So it is really important if we are called to really dive into these shadow places and be with them in a soft and supportive way, that it's a really important time to do so right now. Um, that there is actually a much greater purpose to that. So this is the other message that I really wanted to relay. Um, if you heard my, my transmission um, the last few days, I've really been talking about um, this aspect of um, deeper healing within ourselves is really connected to the deeper healing of Gaia. So if you are someone who is very angry about the situation of our planet right now, whether it's from a social perspective, a consciousness perspective, or a how we treat our planet, this beautiful, beautiful resource and mother of support to us all, this really comes down to, you know, in healing our own relationship with our own inner Gaia, our body is its own small orbital earth and really coming into a deeper healing with this we as a collective will start to shift how we interface with the deeper resonance the deeper relationship we have with the greater earth bodies the universe other human bodies so this is actually very deep stuff it's really simple and it's also really comes from a place of creation and joy so again um, just an invitation as you're joining me just to say hello. Uh, I'm just going to share this up right now with my um, group, Moved by Spirit. And if you would like to join us, I will eventually put a link to Moved by Spirit. Actually, maybe I can do that right now. Let's see. Let's see if I can do that. Um, I will put a link to Moved by Spirit in the comment so if you want to join us you can I will as always I will try to edit um, the description and put a link in the description as well so that's the group if you want to join us and what else I think that's it if you want to again you should be if you're watching this in the future you should see the the links to parts one and two um, in the description and if you're joining me live and you want to know right now where you can find parts one and two um, you can go into the event description in the um, comments section and you will find all of the videos and when I'm done with this video I will be posting it there so that is that okay let's kind of get into what I wanted to talk about today so what I started off with, and again, if you're just joining me in, actually, let's do a little bit of inviting in of a few more folks here. Um, there is quite a few folks that joined us in the last couple of days, so I just want to invite in those who want to come, um, and then we will get rolling. What I did want to talk about, as I mentioned earlier on, is I wanted to talk about... Um, really our relationship and connection to, um, first of all, I mean, the first couple days I talked a lot about sort of shifting our perspective about what boundaries are. That they're actually, the word is um, almost kind of a misnomer, really, if you think about it. Um, if you think about the word boundaries, again, it, it, it it, it makes us think about a, a kind of a wall. And I, I need to kind of think about this for a moment. Maybe a, a better word will come to me. Um, because really what we're looking at is relationship. Um, actually, this is a wonderful uh, symbol for this, is a yin-yang. So if you look at the yin-yang, most of us kind of think in this dichotomy, black and white thinking. So the yin-yang, the reason why there is a black part, a white part, 
and a small white part in the black part and a small black part in the white or what is it? Um, you get the idea. The idea is the symbolism is not to represent black and white. The symbolism is actually to represent that there is a relationship between them. Just like when we have positive and negative poles in a magnet, what's the most important thing is that they relate. You need both sides to the same coin. This isn't not necessarily about opposites attracting. What this is is about relationship. And so boundaries, again, are about our own relationship to ourself and our own alignment to our own energy field. So what happens is when we are aligned, and this is the reason why I, I describe this video is how to patch the holes and repair our sacred boundaries, because I'm not talking about repairing a wall. Okay, I'm not talking about repairing um, a bubble, your field. What I'm actually talking about is actually nurturing and supporting the growth and development of a healthy sense of self. This is what self-esteem is all about. This is what self-love is all about. This is what's about self-care is really all about okay so we think it's attached to you know massages and how we treat ourselves and blah 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 but really what it's tied to is self-talk you can you know most of us are saying these mantras in the mirror you know if you if you follow louise hayes an amazing woman with her mirror work and you're you're looking in the mirror and you're telling yourself i love myself more whatever your mantra is um, you know, I am beautiful, I am confident, blah, 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 blah. But here's the problem is we're looking at our own face and we're lying to ourselves because we don't believe it deep down inside. And this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the roots because here's the thing. Those, um, those mantras that we say can be very helpful, but where it can be unhelpful is when we're using them as the wall. Here's the thing. The way you do one thing is the way you do everything. And so if the way that you protect yourself is by building a wall, at first your wall might be, say, an ego sense of self. And perhaps once you start practicing yoga, Buddhism, meditation, these different mindfulness practices, your new wall actually becomes mindfulness. But here's the thing, it's still a wall. And that wall still requires an enormous energy in order to maintain and uphold. And what happens is when those around you threaten the wall, your new wall might be yoga, but still, you know, I know plenty of yogis that come out of their classes pissed off or, you know, come out of their classes and they're temporarily in a state of bliss and oneness and happiness and then someone cuts them off in traffic, triggers something, and they're right back into it again and again. Myself included, by the way, you know, how many of us have been rushing to a yoga class totally stressed out about being late and being late and like freaking out and like cutting people off and driving like a maniac only to like stop the car, get in there and like, Ooh, I'm releasing all of my day for one hour and 30 minutes <laughs> or one hour and 15 minutes or however long your yoga class is. Great. It helps us. It is our crutches to help us get along. But here's the thing. It's not a permanent fix. And so what I want to talk to you today about is like, how can we start to get real about this stuff? and address a more permanent solution to the issue because although these mindfulness practices can be really helpful, they can become our wall. And so then we are repairing and patching the yoga wall or the mindfulness wall or the meditation wall. It's not sustainable. So yesterday I talked about how mindfulness alone cannot get us to healthy boundaries. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about why that is and how we can actually work towards a healthier state of being in our boundaries. And so I'm just going to recap the first couple days. Um, I'm not going to get into it, of course, deeply because, of course, last yesterday's video was like an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going to let you watch all of that in detail. But I just want to recap the home play because in day one what we talked about is how 
some of the more sticky emotions that we really have a hard time with interfacing, and they're usually the ones that we tend to deny, particularly in the mindfulness and meditation practice. Most practices, again, ask you to witness these things and then let them go. And in the first video, I talked about the entire misnomer, misnomer about you cannot let it go. You first really have to deep dive into a sense of having something to start with before you can let go of what you need to let go of. Hey, Agni, how are you doing today? So today, right now, I'm just doing a quick recap on the last couple of days. This is part three of a three-day series. So in day one, I really talked about how we really need to have a look at some of these sticky things like fear and like anger because they are deeply connected to how we interface with ourselves and it's deeply connected to how we actually have boundaries because again boundaries are about protection and self-protection and so if we're protecting an aligned sense of deep confident inner being from a, a very healthy and strong sense of self we are not we are not um, using as much energy but often what we're doing is we're protecting the walls that we've created and so those walls could be the ego they could be the mask but they're also often our mindfulness practices and our yoga practices right these things can become our wall so often we can use for example a meditation practice to try to calm ourselves down when we're feeling angry and I talked about this at length in the first video, but meditation is not an appropriate answer to the emotion of anger because anger is a very fiery and passionate energy that really needs to be transmuted and it really needs to be channeled through the body, which is why embodiment work is so brilliant because we can actually allow these, in, these, these um emotions especially the fiery and challenging and potent ones there's a lot of power and we can actually run this through our body in a healthy way so we're not exploding our anger at others and we're not imploding our anger at others and we're really using anger to help restore our healthy sense of self which is what it's actually for that's what that's what anger is it's all about actually protecting a healthy boundary. And so when we have a healthy sense of self to begin with, that's what the body intelligence is actually helping us do. The same thing with fear. So we talked about that in, video, in the first video on day one, how these, you know, um, the uh, emotions that we often want to deny and run away from, or we kind of want to gloss over them in, uh, in a more spiritual light and mind frame quite quickly. This is why they come up and we have to keep letting them go because we haven't looked at the roots of the problem. We haven't looked at why we might be wanting to protect ourselves in this situation. Often it's something silly that triggers us. And so our mental mind, again, is telling us, you know, it's not worth getting worked up over, which is why in the home play, for day one, we did a kind of embodiment exercise to start to understand and connect to where do I feel anger in my body and what's the information my body is giving me about my emotional state, about my state of my boundaries. So that was a really important piece. That's why we did that. Day two, so yesterday we talked about how mindfulness alone is not enough and the home play again was related it's another piece another layer to that um, what we did was we dove into um, kind of a sense of a, a memory of where we felt that our boundaries were being trampled upon by ourselves or others and kind of breaking that down a little bit again in an embodied way kind of bringing to the surface what our body has to tell us the information that our other intelligences have because the wisdom of the body is incredible. It does not have the same sense of judgment um, and baggage that the mind carries. So the, the body carries our baggage and emotions in a very different way, in a sensory way. And it's a really easy, simple tool and intelligence that we can tap into to help us kind of unravel and unfold 
the blossoming of really what is the starting of the process of how we start to turn these difficult emotions into light and into creation and unblocking the blockages that we feel. And so today what I wanted to talk about is the next step. So again, you know, I talked about, we're kind of going um, from the, from the, the, almost the end point back to the beginning again, because what I want to talk to you today about and what the home play is going to be based around is how we can actually start to nurture. So what I talked about the key is having a healthy foundation and first a healthy sense of self. And this is something that sometimes I think we can shy away from. It's something that we understand in terms of, you know, taking time for ourselves, self-love, self-care. Hey, Amber, thank you so much for joining. Um, so when we think of a healthy sense of self, we do have like often a vague concept of what this might look like, right? So when we talk about, you know, the hashtag self-care Sunday, this is what we're talking about. But often what, what we think about self-care, you know, taking time for ourselves, while taking time is very important, sometimes what happens is the activities that we choose to engage in to really take care of ourselves are not necessarily aligned with actually helping build a healthy sense of self. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to talk about, so how do we actually begin? Where can we start? to repair some of this sense of, it's really about relationship self with self. And again, I'm going to touch on this because it's a very deep, deep well. Um, again, if you're not familiar with the work that I do, this is the work that I do. And so, you know, we go into this in many different levels of many different kind of levels of the work that I do from, you know, foundational um, group programs to foundational one-on-one -on -one work. There are many layers to this stuff. So I just wanted to kind of, rather than overwhelm you, give you a piece and a place to start from. Because again, as we start to kind of come into those deeper, deeper places, they unravel. And again, I wanted to also remind you, this is something I talked about at length yesterday. I talked about judgment, um, and the whole exercise was kind of around discovering our judgy voices versus um, really coming from the sense of higher self. So the same thing with here. Really what we're doing is we're actually helping to tether the sense of higher self with feeling safe. We're inviting our higher self, our spiritual being, to actually sit safely within our bodies. Because what happens is when we can start to feel safe on an inner level, and when I'm talking about inner level, I'm act, I am actually literally talking about your body. Like there is no joy. Embodiment work basically means you're entering your body. And the reason why I talk about this so much is a lot of us have trauma associated with being inside of our bodies. And just as an aside, um, you know, for those of you who struggle with things like anxiety, depression, and chronic illness, they are often connected to the fact that we don't feel fully safe being in our bodies. And, you know, in, in psychology, we call this dis dissociation, disassociation, can't say it right right now, disassociation. So if you've heard of disassociation, often it's perceived again in a negative light, just like we look at everything, you know, trauma is bad, disassociation, oh my God, don't do that, <laughs> don't get angry. Um, I'm telling you, actually, it's okay. What I want to invite you to, this is my whole concept right here. So if you take nothing away from this video but this, um, you are doing well <laughs> moving forward. Here's the thing. All of this is all just information. Again, yesterday I said if you feel something, that's information. If you don't notice anything, don't freak out. That too is information. So often it's not the, the information or the dissociation or the lack of information that's going in, there's nothing wrong with you. We have a deep, deeply rooted um, 
belief in our culture that there's something wrong with us that needs fixing. And if we can first foundationally start to really, and actually this is going to be, um, as, as I do a lot of intuitive work, I had some ideas for what the home play was, and it was, of course, about you know, coming back to self. But I think this is what we're really going to focus on because this is the essential. This is the essential. With this, you can move mountains, like literally. Um, we have this belief that there is something intrinsically wrong with us. So for, um, for you personally, which is why I always include one-on-one -on -one stuff, because we all, um, you know, in the work that I do, I like, I like to personalize things, because we all um, express this collective, um, you know, you could say trauma or belief, we all express it in a unique way, right? How I express it, how it looks like in me, and the, you know, the interface that I have within my own body and relationships outside of my body and the reflections of all of that, it is unique to me. However, the trauma or, or the suffering is collectively received and seen by all because I see this everywhere. It is, one, it is the reason why we treat the planet like crap. <laughs> it's because we treat our own ecosystem like crap. It's because we believe that there's something wrong with us. Even if you think about, you know, I was thinking about early in my med meditation, one of the interesting processes that came up, because I, I realized, you know, the, the fear that we have around our, our bodily functions, the simplicity of our bodily functions, whether it's, you know, excretion or elimination, menstruation. So we forget that this is actually nurturing the soil. Think about all of the animals and plants. When they die, when they eliminate whatever it is, they're actually returning minerals and, and all sorts of delicious things back into the earth. We don't see it as delicious. And one of this, one of, you know, this is a, an example of how we're, we're not even really fully understanding and seeing how we actually contribute to the recycling of nutrients in the system. We are an animal. We are an intelligent, incredible, wise, spiritual animal. But we are inexplicably interconnected with the earth. And what happens is this dichotomy of understanding that we are spiritual, but also feeling like this physical body isn't a spiritual one. And that there's something wrong with it. It's broken. It needs to be fixed. It's somehow intrinsically wrong. And, you know, a lot of this comes from some of the religious, you know, in dogmas and stuff that we, that we have, like, absorbed. It doesn't matter which religion it is. Most religions have some kind of dogma that sees, you know, if you, even if you look at the different yogic practices of cleansing and purifying the body um, as if it is some, something that needs constant fixing, um, really rather than honoring its wisdom and intelligence. Even if you look at yoga and old practices, it was actually about transmuting the body and kind of beating it into submission. So this is something that as a consciousness and collective at this time, we are evolving away from and towards a more healthy and more enlightened uh, understanding of our physicality of the body, which is why embodiment work is really coming to the forefront right now in the healing world. It really is one of the most potent um, aspects we can tap into as a collective. And the wonderful thing is it's, all, it's all, also the, one of the most simplest um, ways to access our own potential healing. I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, in the olden days of energy healing, you know, I would be channeling all of this energy to you and I'd be raising my vibration and all this kind of stuff. It requires an enormous amount of energy. At this place and time, all that is required is us as healers and beings is simply to work on our own self-healing. And that 
which is healed within us resonates outside of us. We are literally the beacon of light. We become it. People around us start to witness and see it. And by actually doing our own self-healing, we are healing others. It's similar to the concept, if you're familiar with ancestral healing, as we heal some of these ancestral wounds within our bodies and our beings, it influences our own future um, children. It also influences our families and it influences our collective human family here. So this work is very potent and it's very powerful. Um, so what I really want to do is uh, let's get into the home play for today. So what actually what I want to do is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little recording for you all. Um, and I'm going to post it in the comments um, later in this video because what I'd like to do is do a little um, a little channeling for you. Um, and that will be your home play. So what I'm going to try to do is in the next kind of 24 hours, I will post that in the event um, and I will post the link in the video descriptions. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to do a little channeling embodied meditation for you. And what I really um, want you to, um, what I want you to do in the listening, the whole point and purpose of this is really starting to heal um, your own, own connection, your roots to this, this theme, your roots to this collective, um, you know, we could call it trauma or collective experience that we are all working to transform and transmute. And so that is deeply about, you know, really actually shifting our perspective around um, wholeness, shifting our perspective around health, and really starting to change how we look at the body, and again, changing how we look at our society and humanity as a collective. This is really starting to nurture the hope that you have within you and the potency. So I use the word potency a lot, and I just wanted to break this down a little bit for you because it comes from, it actually comes from my cranial sacral therapy training. So potency is this really interesting word that we refer to when we're talking about life force energy. And it's really, we can call it the soul, we can call it the spirit. It's literally the energy the universal intelligence that literally shapes every single cell. So I just want you to really receive these words all the way down to the emotional and cellular level because this is what we're going to be tapping into. We're going to be tapping into the awakening of your potency. This is remembering that you grew each one of your cells, you grew your bones, your heart, your skin cells. You grew all of the musculature and the fascia and the fluids. And through the fluid, so through the liquid, this energy of your spirit did a little dance within you and actually danced you into existence, danced your shape and form into existence. And so in starting to understand this relationship that we have, we can tap into our own inner potency. So my job really in terms of my work is to ignite within you, within each one of my clients and people that I touch with this work, your inner potential, your inner sense of creation. So when I talk about we are really working with the energy of creation. I am actually helping you witness your own energy of creation within you. It's very simple and it's very profound. So again, I will, I'm going to share with you a little home play. So do come back to this video. Um, I sort of thought I was going to give you a little bit of a writing exercise, but I've sort of at the last minute <laughs> changed my mind. Uh, because what I do want you to do, and you can do a little bit of a writing exercise around this concept of 
um, your own interface with feeling wrong or what is wrong with your body, what needs to be fixed. But what I do want to offer you is a little guided meditation. It will probably be about five to 10 minutes just around potency and really tapping into your own potential energy, right? So this, we, we receive it in different ways. But what, what I just invite you to do is come back. I will post that link um, in the video description. I'll post it in the comments. I will post it again in the event description as well. And if you are in my group, I will post it in the group as well as a share. Um, as kind of a little bonus as well, if you are in the group, it's a wonderful place to have a discussion around this. So I really invite you um, I know that like some of the, even some of the personal shares that have come through, which by the way, thank you so much for sharing your stories with me, um, that have come with me through like my messenger. I totally understand and appreciate some of these um, experiences that we have through this journey can be very vulnerable. So what I invite you to do is if it feels appropriate to share it within the group, because within the group, we can actually hold each other and witness it as a collective. Um, this is also why I decided to do, I had most of my programs were all one-on-one -on -one work and intensives that were all one-on-one. -on -one. And so in, uh, on July 21st, I'm holding space for the Sacred Fear, Fear Healing Circle, which is a four-month group space for eight women. And one of the motivations for that is really to be able to hold a group energy and a collective energy because if you think about it when we start to tap into um, that resonance of our own healing potential and our own creation potential when we gather as a group of eight and there's a reason eight equals infinity so it's a wonderful resonant number but we amplify our own creation in a huge way and we actually impact not just the healing of you know those which in, within the circle in a very great and profound way but we actually hold space for a larger collective of our greater community around us so really it is important community work as well as our own deeper healing we also create a specific community around this because again I talked about this in the last couple of days but I just want to touch upon it again um, because this actually came through when I was doing a little card pulling this morning for this transmission it really came through um, for the collective so I'm actually just gonna read this to you because there's a couple things that came through in terms of messaging so one is the messaging of, um, and this is the card that came through, is island, solitude. So if you look at um, this particular card, we have this sense of this island around, with nothing really around it. Um, we have this beautiful blossoming tree, and we have this stormy, kind of tumultuous weather all around. And so the message that came through was, you know, what can feel, and again, I'm reading down here because I, I wrote some notes about this through the channeling. It makes it a little bit easier for me sometimes to transmit. So what can feel like a safe and comforting place and retreat within can also be the very thing that keeps us where we are, separate, alone, and isolated. So if you were like me, um, you know, I really kept myself away from my own healing process for a long, long time because one of my means of protection really is, was isolation and, and separating myself because it felt safer to go deep within and hide from the world, um, within my yoga practice, within my spiritual practice, within my mindfulness practice, it became a safe retreat space for me. And so I went inward, it was my escape. Um, and, it, and it felt really good and it felt really safe. But one of the issues is that it also kept me trapped it kept me trapped in chronic fatigue and chronic pain and anxiety. And it, and it left me with this deep sense of isolation and separateness. Like there was no one really else that I could really speak to about this because there was something intrinsically, again, wrong with me and I should be able to fix it. I should be able to transmute it. And I just didn't know how or why. And really, I could not reach out for the type of support I needed. And so 
So it can really keep us held where we are, which is sometimes feeling separate and alone and isolated with our storm clouds of emotions and emotional turmoil sitting with us and us constantly trying to transmute the same things over and over with, you know, to no avail. We often don't know where to start, but reaching out, we must. We must learn to trust our gut literally. So this is the other magic of embodiment work is our deeper intelligence, with it, whether it's within the intestines, the, the gut um, biome, which has a lot of information where we kind of especially process our emotional realm so that we can really tune into the frequency of the right support for us. And so when I talk about right support, we can have the courage to really lean in and, and access when we can really tap into our gut and intuition and have a clear sense again with, with, with actually starting to connect more with a healthy sense of inner self and inner being we can start to build our courage and to lean into those difficult places and recognize and see the right support for us at the right time and say yes to it. So this is another thing we talked about in the last few days is learning. It's not just boundaries and not just about saying no. It's also saying yes to the thing that you need to do, that you need to do next, that your heart and soul and gut is really calling you forward to do. Uh, the other aspect that I wanted to talk about is this. So this is the roots. This speaks to the topic of today, um, the repairing of what lies beneath. So what lies beneath, I'll just have, oh, there we go. So this is an iceberg submerged. So this is really showing us that the roots of our de deep sense of safety and security within ourselves, a lot of us is really underground. And so again, um, the iceberg submerged, it, you know, what we see is often only a small piece or a small percentage of the whole story. So embodied and supported investigation into the deep allows us to go deeper than, what, than which we cannot see. Right, so this is why it's really important to have an appropriate network of support. Um, we know that it's there, so that's why we feel stuck. That's why we feel these, these feelings of not feeling supported or not feeling like we have great boundaries. These are kind of messages to us, basically showing us there's something deeper under there that we need to address. So we know that it's there. We know that it is a profound effect on our health and on our lives and our whole ecosystem within us. And we aren't, but we just aren't always sure on how to navigate it. Perhaps there is a fear that if we strike deep, we sink like the unsinkable ship Titanic and we risk the very vulnerability that appears to be holding it all together. So again, this speaks directly to our boundaries. The stuff that lies beneath, the stuff that lies deep, is the stuff that we are using. It's the glue that is holding us together. And so this, going back to the last couple of days, is the reason why we cannot come unglued, literally. We will come unglued if we let some of this stuff without first coming into a sense of sacred self and starting to repair our deeper inner sense of being. And so, again, um, I just want to talk about the, the fundamentals of the home play. Again, the home play is going to be a, a link that I will um, post here. It will be a um, guided journey. But what I'd like you to really just reflect on before that link gets uploaded, um, what I'd like you to reflect on is this. Just Coming into the space of, again, the sound of your higher self being a, a space of love and appreciation and true, true, as if you were taught speaking to um, your dearest loved one, if they are in pain or suffering, that sense of 
reaching out from your heart, that sense of holding. So what I'm inviting you to do is really that sense of energy and being able to bring that towards yourself in this experience. Again, the home play is about not just looking at where this collective idea and belief has done us harm, but it's actually about how do we rewrite the story? How do we actually tap into our own sense of creation? I often use this analogy of the dance and the dancer. If you have done anything creative in your life, whether it's art or writing, movement or music, there is often, you know, there is no joke and no, um, it's not, you know, a surprise that my business is called Moved From Within because there is, there is a deep connection that we often feel. We call it flow sometimes, we call it inspiration. But when you see a dancer and they are dancing and you see the physical person, you see the physical body, but the expression of the dance is actually moving through the dancer. It's no longer just the individual with the body moving in a static way. It is a sense of spirit moving through this incredible instrument, this incredible being. And so this is actually our daily experience of life. This is the daily experience that is renewing each cell that you have in your body. It is the daily experience that is exfoliating the dead skin cells that we don't need so that they can be recycled into the minerals of the earth and the planet and the air and, and the atmosphere of all the matter from which we once came from and eventually will come back to. So this physical sense, this physical self, this this idea of separation is really what we need to heal because being in the body, having a body does not need to be an experience of trauma and separation. Reintegration is actually the answer. It's the path to really living not just our boundaries, but really living wholeness, really living health, really living our limitlessness, our optimalness. These things that often we, we feel like in the back of our mind, we know it might be possible, I think, someday. But until we start to see it embodied and feel it within our own bodies, I know for me, one of, one of a, a really formative experience I had in my own chronic healing process, and I was in my probably mid to late 20s at the time, was doing an embodiment workshop with this woman um, named Liz Cook, who um, is an amazing woman who's done a lot of work on um, the midline, the core, and working with the psoas, and really tapping into the um, Kind of the more spiritual and practical, you know, practical spiritual sense of what the psoas is really about, which is really about the messenger within the body, the information system. It's very deeply tied to our nervous system response and our healthy ability to uh, really process and understand fear. You know, we think of fear often, again, dichotomy. Um, it's a physical response to protect, or it's this like, you know, um, psychological thing that's keeping us from realizing our dreams. It's the same thing. We're putting it into two different categories. It's the same experience. When we can physiologically process and understand that process of fear within each cell and have a conscientious spiritual awareness of what that is, this is what wholeness is. Then we can start to actually understand the wisdom that fear has to offer us, the wisdom that our intuition really, how our intuition actually transmutes by, right? So I won't get too far into this because it's sort of like, I'm like, wow, I'm getting on, I can get on a whole nother tangent with that. But what I learned was watching this woman who was in her um, late, 
mid to late sixties, I believe. Sorry, Liz, if I'm getting your age range wrong here. But anyway, she was more than twice my age, my elder at the time. And when I watched the articulation of how she moved her body with such fluidity and with grace and with ease, um, not just through the exercises that we were doing, the explorations, but also just, you know, watching her walk down the stairs. And I thought to myself, here I am in, you know, my lit mid to late 20s, this healthy, vibrant woman who has a movement pattern of someone far older than her actual physical age. And here is this woman who basically at my age suffered from severe scoliosis and healed herself through these different unravelings and teachings that she really learned from the wisdom inside her own body and embodiment work. And how this work not just unraveled her, her scoliosis patterns, and the psychosomatic emotional patterns through, but she actually uses this work as a um, teaching tool to help others um, really fully free the wild woman within and express what's wanting to come through. And I, I particularly remember it hit me watching this woman articulate her hip joints, and I had injured my left hip joint, and I'd had an experience of seven or eight years of chronic pain in my body, particularly in my hip and lower back. And I just remember watching her thinking, wow, like I want to move like that. Not when I'm 60. I want to move like that now. I can't do that. And I realized that the only thing keeping me from it was tapping into my own capacity in order to heal myself. And so this was a, a very formative moment, of course, in unraveling my healing journey and bringing to you all of the gifts and messages that I have accumulated through my own healing path as well as through healing um, my clients. But I want to share with that, that with you because you know, that was a very formative um, moment for me and how I also view the body in terms of the stories that we tell ourselves around aging and how we believe that aging is really this process that we all experience collectively in the same way. Our body breaks down like a machine. It becomes decrepit. Guess what? Your body is not a machine. If you look at, you know, the revered old growth cedars and the sequoias and these amazing, huge, massive thousand year old giants, we do not view an ancient tree as decrepit and weak. We, grow, we, we see it as it's really realizing its full potential and its protection of others within the ecosystem, its role. So I really want that to sink in because your own body has the same potentiality as a seed of a tiny little cedar seedling to grow into that mature and beautiful and blossoming tree. And it's not going to take you thousands of years, thank God. It can actually be a process that starts right in this moment. As soon as we tap into, in, in, in fact, every single time I do a one-on-one -on -one session with someone and I deeply tap into my own potentiality, every time I do embodied meditation work in my own practice and I tap into that own potentiality, I get to tap into the mature cedar tree. I get to feel that deep in my cells and I get to remember who I really am, who re we really are. We forget. I know this talk is about boundaries, but it's about so much more because when we remember we can let go. We don't even need to let go because it's not a requirement anymore to maintain the walls. We don't have to worry about patching the holes and repairing walls because we can just exist. We can embody our ancient tree self, our ancient wise ecosystem self. And that alone is enough. The walls are not required. Our meditation practice, our mindfulness practice becomes something else. 
it becomes a support system rather than, you know, what's that stuff that you put on the walls, like concrete or like what's the, what's the, the stuff that masons use, like the stuff that you use to fill in the gaps, the chinks in the wall. You know, often it's, it's not meditation's fault. It's not yoga practice's fault. It's how we use these tools when we use them as, as a replacement for our other walls. Again, we are just reinforcing the blocks. And what I'm not asking you to do, to be very clear, I'm not asking you to take down your walls. What I'm asking you to do is come within the wall, come within your deepest sense of being, and call her in. Call her in softly, call her in gently, and feed her. Feed her with love and joy and hope. Feed her, do not judge her. Feed her well. Feed her robustly. Do not skimp on the chocolate. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Do not skimp on that which she, she is calling to. So if she is calling to help and support, feed her. If she is calling to a delicious cup of tea and fuck you, call her. Support her in that. Allow her to do what she needs to do. Give her the credit that she deserves for being and protecting and helping you, shaping you, forming you, and creating you. So I think I'm going to leave that there for today. We are at an hour. Again, to recap, two things, the home play I will come back to. It is about um, a little, um, a, a, an embodied meditation, a mindfulness channeling that I want to offer you to come. Again, it'll be a link that I'll post here in the comments. I'll go back to the um, description and it will be right up there in the description. So just come back to the video um, in the next couple of days over the course of the weekend. It should be up. And that's going to be um, your part three. Again, you can come back to the home play for parts one and two whenever you want. Um, and again, for part two, I come back to the comments. So part two, I offered another um, embodiment exercise um, as a prep for the writing exercise. All you have to do in, in part two or this video, just say, hey, send me the free embodiment meditation, whatever it is. I'll just send it to you. Um, via messenger. So I just wanted to, to say that. The second thing is the invitation. So this is not for everybody, but there are spaces for five women into the container of eight, the sacred container of eight for healing our sacred fear. So if you want to join into the sacred fear healing circle, I'm going to post a link on the information for that and how to register in the comments right now. There it is. So that is the Sacred Fear Healing Circle. If you know you need that place of support, now is the time. Again, you know, it's kind of interesting with the cards that I pulled, but again, this is the space of if you are resonating with this sense of solitude and island, if you have isolated yourself, and I don't mean, you know, a lot of us are, this is something that someone shared with me recently too, and it really resonated with me. You know, we are not without community. You know, I myself am a, have before and even now have a tendency, it is something I need to watch about myself, is that I isolate myself from the type of support that I need. So I might have, have my partner, I might, I might have close friends, I might have family and community around me. However, the support that is required to really support the shadow stuff and heal these spaces is very different 
than sometimes our community and our friends and our current support network can provide. And so the reason why I also wanted to do a group format for this is because it allows us to connect with other women that can help guide us and support us and hold us. So there is networks and friendships that are created within the circle so that those humans, those beautiful souls, if you resonate with that other woman perhaps or several other women in the circle, further along, we can support and continue to support each other. So this is something that I noticed in myself. For example, I talked about with myself, you know, I have a support network for my business because my business really is a huge personal growth vehicle for me. It challenges me in a lot of ways. It requires me to show up and dive into places in my own fear and discomfort and insecurities that are like, wow. <laughs> and so, you know, for me, I have really had to seek out this type of support for myself in my business so that I can, you know, when I'm freaking out, that I have other women in the community around me to hold me because I can't go necessarily to um, the people within my regular community and my regular support network for these types of things. You know, for example, in my family, I am the only one that has her own business. And so it is very difficult if you have your own business to talk about something like that to people that have a very different relationship. They won't be able to relate in the same way and they often give you, um, well-meaning but not very good advice and so it's the same thing with healing our fears and our angers and our anxieties and our sticky stuff this sacred circle is a safe landing pad it's soft and it's bright and it's spacious and it's basically its purpose really is to hold this stuff in a safe fluid and ample way and so if this is something that you're working through right now and by the way if you are being called to work on this right now now is the time I talked about this in the last couple days astrologically during this whole eclipse season right now is the time so if you're kind of feeling a little shaken not stirred there is a reason for that um, if you're feeling a little activated in this stuff recently there is a reason for that. There's a reason for the timing of the Sacred Fear Healing Circle as well. We start on um, July 21st, and there is a reason for that date because July and August are kind of these wonderful potent times where the universal energy can support us. So we have kind of me support, group support, universal support. It's a triple container of holding space for this stuff. So again, if this is something that you're looking for, um, it's a beautiful container for you, and I invite you to say yes if that is the yes that's resonating with you right now. So anyway, that is that invitation for you. Again, we start in like eight or nine days, eight days. We start in eight days. <laughs> um, I invite you in. I can feel you coming in already. So you know who you are. The link is up and it will be up in the description as well. Information about who this is for and who this is not for is in the link provided. Um, the registration details and everything are in there as well as um, the investment, everything like that. Another just quick little um, little descriptor for this, this is for you if, um, you know, I'm just kind of looking at the page here. So really this is, this is people, this is for you women if you're wanting to heal your shadows, if you're wanting to really make peace with these darker, um, roots that we often carry. So this is for you if that's the place you're at with getting support with healing that. This is what it's all about. Um, otherwise, look out for um, this, this um, class's home play. Um, I invite you to comment either here or in the Move by Spirit any of your questions, insights, 
clarifications that come through. So I really want to support you on all levels. That's why I do free workshops as well, because they are really profound. And just as another thank you, actually, one of my participants um, actually um, did a donation, a surprise donation for me because of the profound experience that she had through these transmissions. So this stuff really works. So actually taking some action, so taking these words not just into your cellular level, but doing the home play, doing the exercises, taking the next steps for you. These resources may be free, but they are very profound and they really can make a huge impact like they did with this wonderful, beautiful soul. So again, thank you so much for your donation um, and your support. I'm really glad and so happy that this transmission was uh, supportive for you and helping to support and create and connect you to that sense of creation, that sense of potency within you. So that is what I'm all about. This is why I'm here. Um, again, there's many different levels of support and they're all wonderful. So wherever you're at, whether you're looking on at you know one-on-one -on -one support um, or whether you're looking at the group container support or whether you're looking for the small pieces that lie within these free workshops. I invite you to really um, lean into the level that you need right now and take some action, whatever that is for you. Okay. Anyway, dear ones, loved ones, thank you so much for joining me for this three-part series. Um, I will be away from Facebook probably for the next 24 hours, but I will be posting the info. I will be getting back to your comments and questions and all of that good stuff, however, probably Monday and Tuesday. So until then, have a beautiful rest of your weekend. I'm sending you so much love. Um, thank you for joining me, dear ones. Um, I'm wishing you and sending you so much love and support and blessings on your journey. You are all so much more than you understand you are. So keep on keeping on. Um, keep on connecting to that which helps to nurture that best self that, in, that you embody. Um, and we will see a huge change within our planetary body as well. So thank you all. Lots of love.